Hi, it's Red Recapped here. Today I'm going to describe a movie called, The Basketball Diaries, which came out in 1995. There will be some spoilers in the following, so, let's start the movie right now. The movie begins when Jim Carroll wakes up to his loud, distraught neighbor praying through curses. When his mother enters his room, she tells him to close the blinds and pay no attention to the neighbor. However, Carol becomes frustrated by his noisy neighbor and shouts for her to shut up. Later at school, Carol receives a paddle beating from Father McNutty during class. This hurts everyone feeling in the class, but to their surprise, just an intense triumphant look crosses Carol's face. After the harsh punishment, he regroups with his friends, Mickey, Pedro, and Neutron. Shortly after, he tells them they should skip class, to which they all agree and make their way down the stairs. After changing and coming out of the building, they run as they cling to the back of a bus. They playfully run around the area, rummaging through vendor carts and inhaling carbonic cleaning fluid. When Pedro pukes at somebody, they break into a run again into the neighborhood. Then, the group returns to school for a basketball game. Swifty, their coach, checks in on all the players. Carol and the rest of the team sign a basketball for Bobby, one of their previous members diagnosed with leukemia. After Swifty marks the ball, they huddle and cheer out Bobby's name. When the players go out to do warm-ups, Swifty calls Carol and tells him about college opportunities for basketball. Swifty strangely invites him for a night out to go over college schools, but he refuses and tells him that he's busy most nights. During the game, Mickey gets into trouble with one of the enemy team players. Meanwhile, Pedro sneaks into the changing rooms and steals one of the enemy team's players' belongings. When he returns, Carol's team manages to win the game. After that, Swifty treats Carol and his friends to a burger shop. However, their fun and celebration get cut short when the enemy team confronts them outside. When one of the players accuses Carol's group of stealing from them, Carol denies it. The situation quickly escalates when Carol hits one of the players, turning it into a fistfight between the two groups as Carol and his friends subtly steal from them. When more enemy players approach them, Carol and his friends run away. During the evening, Carol's group shows each other the loot they had stolen from the enemy's team. Then, an intoxicated woman named Diane Moody approaches them. She asks for money in exchange for pleasure, but Carol and his group refuse, mocking her while she walks away. As Carol leaves, he also visits Bobby, who is frail and bald, in the hospital. Carol shows him the signed basketball and warmly asks how he is. Seeing his friend depressed and weak on the hospital bed, he tells him they should go out. Carol loves Bobby the most rather than his other friends. In a huge contrast to the group, Bobby is mature and intellectual. He also has been avoiding drugs and hooliganism. After speeding through the area, they stroll through the towns and shops. Knowing how talented poet Carol is, Bobby asks him if he has written any poem recently. When Carol shows him a piece of paper, Bobby reads it aloud, interested in its meaning. However, when Bobby suddenly gets saddened by how he has leukemia, he demands they return to the hospital. He frustratingly tells Carol that he doesn't have much time left. The following morning, Carol's mother asks him to find a job. Too distracted by writing, Carol calmly nods along. Carol's mother explains that she wants him to have some responsibility by finding a job. Still, Carol responds by telling her that he must play basketball. When he arrives at the court, he continues writing in his notebook until he gets interrupted by Reggie, an old friend, who challenges him to a basketball game. At the same time, the two play without keeping score. Shortly after, Mickey, Pedro, and Neutron arrive. Out of curiosity, Mickey and the group read through Carol's notebook. When Carol notices, he defensively grabs the notebook and warns them never to touch it again. After his friends apologize, they make their way to the Harlem River. Having taken off most of their clothes, they prepare to dive into the feces-filled water. Mickey recalls Bobby and talks about the stunts he used to do on the cliff. Offended by Mickey's tone, Carol tells him not to talk about Bobby like he's dead. During the evening, Neutron introduces Carol to two prostitutes, along with narcotics. After a pleasurable night, Carol writes in his diary about the effects of the stimulants he had taken. Then, before he can control himself, Carol looks for more, trembling and shaking as the chemicals run through his body. Not too long after that, Carol attends Bobby's funeral. He kneels in front of the casket as he mourns Bobby's death. He narrates the deathly look on his friend's face as his pale body lay limp in the coffin. When he and his friends exit the building, they drink their sorrows away while recalling their moments with Bobby. When Mickey says that Bobby is better off dead, Carol frustratingly asks them if they ever took the time to visit him. His friends begin to enumerate the number of times their other friends have died. Then, out of pain and grief, Carol throws a tantrum, unable to accept Bobby's death. The group ends the night by drowning themselves in a basketball game in the pouring rain. Carol recalls the first time he tried injecting himself with diacetyl morphine in Pedro's basement. 
he remembers feeling like he was running through a field of flowers. When he returns to his apartment, his mother tries to comfort him as he goes through the symptoms of the narcotic. Upset, his mother yells for him to stop his habits, but he frustratingly tells her to go away. Disoriented and nauseous, he goes through the night puking and dazed. He then explains in his diary that it had started as a habit that he usually did on Saturdays. However, his habit eventually grew too big for him to manage. He starts experimenting with other narcotics, drowning himself in their blissful and euphoric side effects. One night, he and his friends prepare to muggle an old lady. When Pedro refuses to make the first move, Carol removes his mask and tricks the old lady into thinking he's asking for directions. When the old lady points out the directions, Carol's group proceeds to incapacitate her while taking her bag. One day at school, Carol and his friends are set to go to confession. Carol tries to explain to Father McNutty that he doesn't want to go. Still, the priest doesn't accept his excuse and tells him to go into the confessional. When Carol enters, he tells the priest that he doesn't know where to begin with his confessions. When the priest asks him questions about his wrongdoing, Carol confesses to all his shenanigans and even crimes. Then, he starts to talk about Bobby and how unfair his death was. Before he can continue talking, the priest cuts him off. Soon after that, he continued to write in his diary about the downward spiral he took as his bad habits worsened. During basketball practice, Carol asks Swifty to go to the restroom. However, when he goes inside, he quickly takes in a whiff of some narcotics he had stashed in his shoe. When he hears his coach entering the room, he quickly puts it away. When he fails to explain what he's doing correctly, Swifty misinterprets the situation, thinking that Carol wants physical pleasure from him instead. When Carol angrily refuses, Swifty tries to bribe him with a fistful of money, but to no avail. Then he adds that no one will ever believe Carol and that everyone knows about his habits with narcotics. Furious by the remark, Carol gives Swifty a bloody nose as he walks away. Carol writes in his diary that he wants to stop but can't. He compares the side effects of narcotics to dreams. He explains that he can't control himself when he gets tempted and adds that the effects make him feel like he can do anything. Soon, he fantasizes about walking through the school, dressed in all black and holding a shotgun. In his fantasy, he walks around his class and shoots everyone, including Father McNutty. However, his short daydream gets interrupted when reality comes back via Father McNutty waking him up during the course. As the effects begin to be visible during class hours, the effects of his habits start taking over his basketball life. Before one of their games, Carol and his friends take out a new stash. Seeing that their new narcotics are colored differently, they ask for Neutron's opinion. When Neutron suggests that they should put it away, Mickey mocks him and his goody two-shoes behavior. The group takes the narcotics randomly and quickly returns to the playing area. When Pedro and Mickey disappear from view, Neutron confronts Carol. Neutron points out that Carol's habits are getting out of control and will affect his gameplay. During the game, Carol begins looking paler than usual. Sure enough, he becomes more inattentive and disoriented during the game. After a couple of steals from the enemy and a few missed shots, Carol's gameplay becomes sloppy as he collapses on the floor. Then, he and his friends get taken back to the changing rooms as two policemen search their lockers for any stashes of narcotics. When the police officers leave empty-handed, Father McNutty suspends Mickey and Carol. The duo ends up quitting the basketball team in unison. When they ask Neutron to go with them, he decides to stay at the school, leaving the friends he once had. And in the next life, Father, I'm gonna have the paddle. Don't worry, Swifty, I'm not gonna rat you out. When Carol arrives at his apartment, his mother questions him about what he's been doing at school. Carol refuses the accusations his mother throws at him and curses her. Infuriated, she yells for him to leave. Irritable and dazed, Carol angrily screams and leaves the apartment. He yells to his mother that she'll never see him again. Then, he and his friends start breaking into cars. One night, they enter a vehicle to give it to Mickey's brother in exchange for cash. Pedro recklessly drives through traffic when they get the car started, nearly killing them. After that, Mickey reminds them that the car needs to be scratch-free to get the money. However, dazed and intoxicated, Pedro misses the tow-away signage. Consequently, when they bring the car to the meet-up location, it gets towed away. When Mickey's brother sees, he quickly rages against Mickey and attacks him for wasting his time. The group retreats to the headquarters, a run-down building where all the homeless people go for shelter. As Carol stays there and gets to know the other people living there, his downward spiral continues to go out of control. Later, Carol and his friends break into a store. They quickly loot the building, stealing food and cash. When Mickey discovers a gun, he proceeds to wave it around as if he were playing. As they get ready to leave, Pedro stays behind, inattentive and aloof. Panicky, Mickey holds a gun to Pedro's head to make him move, but he doesn't. Mickey gruesomely knocks Pedro down. Just then, the police arrive and arrest a battered Pedro for robbery, 
While Mickey and Carol manage to flee to a nearby cafe, they see their old friend, Neutron, on the television. Mickey tells Carol they must go, but Carol's focus remains on the screen. Carol thinks about what he could have been had he not gone on a downward spiral with narcotics and other intoxicants. Then he briefly visits his apartment to catch a glimpse of his mother. Later, he gets caught up in an argument with a man who claims to have a girlfriend to whom he sold narcotics. The man asks for a refund, but he refuses. The man quickly grabs him and gives him a beating, throwing him down a flight of stairs. He goes out of the building and walks through the cold snow, reminiscing about his failed dreams of becoming a successful basketball player as he passes out on the snow. He then wakes up in a room. He sees Reggie in the seat beside him, reading his diary. Unable to process the situation, he grabs his jacket and prepares to leave, forgetting to thank Reggie for saving his life from the cold. However, when Carol empties his pockets, he notices that his narcotics are missing. When he asks Reggie where it is, the man reveals it in his hand. Despite Carol's aggressive attempts to get it back, Reggie manages to flush it down the toilet. Then, out of anger, he takes hold of Carol and forces him to look at himself in the mirror, all bloodied and bruised. Reggie guards Carol as he goes through withdrawal symptoms. Despite Carol's pleas and cries for intoxicants, Reggie keeps Carol in the room. After hours of non-stop begging and crying, Carol falls asleep. The following day, Carol wakes up in his normal state. When Reggie leaves him to go outside, Carol deals with the temptations alone. After hours of boredom, he begins frantically rummaging through Reggie's things to find cash. When he does, he goes out to run back into the addicted world from which he had escaped. Out on the street, he encounters Moody, who's surprisingly clean. When he tries to ask her if she has any more morphine, she throws him pennies and mocks him for being an addict. Carol throws a series of insults back as he gathers the pennies and runs off. Desperate for drugs, Carol ends up giving men physical pleasure in exchange for money. The worst part is that he can't get Swifty out of his head, which is torturing him even more. When he regroups with Mickey, they go to a man named Pino and ask him for narcotics. After an exchange of cash, Pino gives it to them. However, when Carol and Mickey discover it's fake, they run after Pino. Mickey takes out his gun and fires a couple of shots at him. After being chased to the building rooftop, Pino falls off the ledge, dying instantly. As Mickey flees the scene, a group of men confront him and beat him up at a corner. They quickly escape as a few policemen arrest Mickey on the spot. Meanwhile, Carol returns to his apartment. When he knocks on the door, his mother opens it slightly, ensuring the door chain is locked. He sluggishly asks her for money, explaining that he's not going to do anything with it. Despite her teary eyes to finally see her son, Carol's mother refuses and tells him that she can't help him. Unfortunately, Carol becomes violent when she repeatedly refuses. She locks the door and quickly calls the cops, telling them someone broke into her apartment. When they arrive, they take him downstairs and arrest him. Carol writes in his diary that he spent six months on Rikers Island and that he managed to stay clean throughout the entire duration. When he gets released, he meets Pedro in an alley. He happily offers Carol a pack of narcotics. Without hesitation, Carol calmly refuses. When Pedro walks away, Carol enters a building through a stage door. The movie ends as Carol reads his writing material for the first time to an audience about his experiences in the world of narcotics. Thanks for watching.